Hello and welcome to another of my internet videos on the new 6th edition Tyranids. Yay! This time I thought I'd just go over some general observations that I made about the Tyranid army and the changes in them. Just they don't really fit anywhere other than these are important changes that you need to know in order to successfully win uh, with the Tyranid army. So just to list them, the first things you need to know, go to ground, deep strike, shadow in the warp, fortifications, and the Tyranids are no longer limited to just being an assaulting army. Uh, so first one go to ground this is important because in the new rules if a unit has gone to ground it does not roll on the instinctive behavior charts this means whether it's gone to ground voluntarily or involuntarily otherwise known as pinning tests so now uh when somebody shoots at you uh pretty much you can if you decide to go to ground you don't have to make an instinctive roll next or you don't have to make an instinctive roll and that means next turn it can still behave normally outside of synapse range and if that means you can assault and get into hand to hand combat in that turn then of course you still don't have to make any instinctive uh, behavior rolls very important concept deep striking uh, most every unit can do some form of deep striking or outflanking or infiltration move in the Tyranid army. And this is important because you then can have a very useful procedure for making sure those units come in when you want them to come in in the order that they come in. One of these is the Swarm Lord with his, I believe it's Alien Cunning that gives plus one on reserve rolls. And for a very small amount of points, you can get an Aegis defense line, then upgrade it with a comms array, which allow you to re-roll missed reserve rolls. This gives you great control over your Tyranids and their deep strikes, many of which are very important, like the Molochs, which basically their deep strike turns into a double tap ordnance blast. Uh, and of course the Trigon and its tunneling. Um, this is also then useful with the Lictors, which uh, don't deviate when they deep strike due to Chamelic skin, and Pheromone Trail, which then allows you to place any other future deep striking unit within six inches of the Lictor without deviation. So I've used this in the game in, in, in my army list as I take the Aegis defense line, I set that back in the table, I hold the majority of my units in reserve, uh, of which my army is almost all warriors. And I did that at first just to prove all the people wrong who say that warriors suck. Um, and secondly, because they don't suck. And what happens then is, as you go through the game, especially in a table corners game, when you have that much precision of deep striking and tunneling, you can just start dropping units after units of scoring, scoring units into the, into the three different corners. If you have, oh, and especially without flanking, uh, with the Swarm Lord, you can uh, nominate, what was it? It was the... Um, it was the upgrade that allows you to nominate two of your units as outflanking units. Those could be any units. So you've got NIDs coming in from all sides. Uh, deep striking, tunneling, and outflanking. You're, you, you can basically, throughout the game, you can wait until the last few turns, turn three, turn four, uh, and suddenly, boom, deep striking units, deep striking units, 30, 30 Hermagots, 30 Termagots, or, or Gene Stealers walk in from the side of the table. Uh, suddenly, it's a contested quarter, or if there's nobody there, it's a completely empty quarter. And many times with my mall walks, if I had one unit there in a contested corner or even an empty corner, and he just sat there the whole turn, the whole game, thinking, wow, this is a safe corner – 
sent all his troops to another section where I diverted them, and then suddenly, boom, uh, a Malwok pops in. That does two ordnance blast hits on this troop unit. It was a Tau Fire Warrior unit, actually. Uh, boom. That almost killed them all. One of them was out of range, and there was a Lictor that was still within the six inches, and which walked on the turn before. And so after the two shots with the Moloch, I took two Moloch's and three hits, wiped out the unit. That puts them there in the Lictor. Okay, but then right after the two Moloch deep strikes, the third deep strike was a warrior unit. Again, non-deviating, boom, right in. Basically, you can attack anywhere on the table. Uh, it's also really useful now with smore, spore mines, which are deep striking. Uh, and they get plus one to their strength for every spore mine in the cluster, so they're going up to strength nine. It's very useful. Uh, learn to deep strike is basically what I'm saying, and you, and you shouldn't be walking around the table at all. Another one is fortifications. And this is really why I think a lot of people think the Tyranid army got nerfed is because they had to prepare the combinations of Tyranids with fortifications, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, like I said, I had a uh, the Aegis defense line. If you're doing a 2,000 point game, uh, then you're already now having two H. You, you do you have a chance of doing two detachments. Uh, wow, that's uh, that's for the Tyranids. That's that's amazing combinations going on there. Uh, but you can imagine then the the landing platform, which is just the uh, I think it's the four up, invulnerable save, with exocrines sitting on top of it, or 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 if not the exocrines, then what are the the pyrovores are nice if things get close. Or even just um, just lots and lots of, of warriors uh, with three assault strength fours. Very, very, very dangerous combinations. Uh, it also, well, personally, I also once used them in the in the Fortress of Redemption, and uh, that was great. Again, used a lot of tunneling attacks. Basically, I had. Um, Four units of warriors sitting in the fortress, uh, three Malwoks in back is, was the basic point of the army list. Uh, the Malwoks could just pop under and start uh, blasting at the table, and the warriors sat back and shot. And whatever didn't, whatever the Malwoks didn't, Malwoks didn't kill usually had to eventually advance up, or or I also had. Well, never mind. That's a battle report. So at this point, you really have to question, is the Tyranid army really limited to being a salt army instead of really just being whatever it needs to be army? And I believe it can be any type of army it wants to be. It's not just a, a small swarm army or a Nidzilla army or they basically need to slug across the table and get it to hand to hand. At this point in time, I think they could really viably be any type of army you really want to play it to be. Um, and that is my overall important points to know about the new Tyranid Codex. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.